Well, and um, it's another good chance to welcome all of us in the viewing of uh, number four in the series, uh, The Brace uh, Reform. And uh, my prayer is that we may be educated at the end of the day, that uh, we may be educated and uh, we may go closer to Christ. Shall we pray? Maria, Father in heaven, once again, thank you for your love is uh, immense and uh, you always want good for us. And so you have created us for a purpose of being in your likeness. As we look at uh, this information, we pray that uh, we may reflect the same image in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, and so this is the number four, and I'm looking at the issue in whose likeness that is um, what uh, I'm really looking at at this hour. In everything that uh, we are doing, in whose likeness do we want to appear in whose likeness? And uh, at the end of uh, the day, everyone has to ask themselves, why was I created? What is the purpose of my creation? Why did the Lord put me on this face of the earth? Was it just uh, uh, he put me there to live like I want and at the end of the day, never be bothered by anything? And so the question in whose likeness, this is what uh, we are going to look at. Now, What uh, sorry, I'm looking at my um, yes, welcome back. Um, what did God say at the end of his work of creation? And uh, God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. And uh, the evening and the morning were the sixth day. This Genesis chapter one, verse 31. God saw no need to make a correction in his work. It was all very good even today, except for the blight of sin. We are looking in this issue of grace in whose likeness. In uh, Ecclesiastes 3.14, I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be, forever nothing can put to it nor anything taken from it and God doeth it that men should fear uh, before him if you do not like how you are created you better start liking it now it is yours for eternity you may attempt to change the color of your lips that to your body but it's only for a while nature forces itself back or if you overstretch it you suffer the after effects the way you were created if we look at um, the way we were created is for eternity except uh, genetical um, disorders we may say like harms lameness and uh, it is sin this is the only uh, things that uh, we suffer because of sin jesus ascended to heaven with the face his disciples knew him with we retain you as to hell or heaven, so we can choose where we want. And so we are looking at uh, in whose likeness we want to appear. Uh, how did Jacob appear before God with his household? Genesis 35, verses 2 and 3. Then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you, and be clean, and change your ornaments, and let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I'll make there an altar unto God. So put away the strange gods. And if you look at the things they put away, they were the ornaments, the decorations, and all these things, and they were buried under the membrane of tree so that they may be forgotten forever and ever. What does God say about shaving hairstyles and tattoos? You shall not round the corners of your head, neither shall thou mar the corners of thy beard. Leviticus 19.27 you shall not make any cuttings into your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you 
I am the Lord. That is verse 28. Again, is it proper for Christians to keep long nails? And we shall shave her head and pair her nails, Deuteronomy 21, 12. It is only certain that it's grown with long nails, so it seems to scare people. We know that uh, he was created a good angel, uh, but the depictions always are because of his perverted image. Only Nebuchadnezzar is recorded in the Bible to have kept long nails and only when mad in Daniel 4.33. Imagine the holy angels of Jesus Christ keeping long nails talk about good grooming habits. And so should you be appearing like this? Uh, if the garments that we wear are not to be of shouting colors, so how shall be even our hands which we use to dine with others on the table? How does it look like when you appear on the table like this to dine with other people? You answer for yourself. We looked at uh, this uh, the issue of um, man shall not wear that which pertained to the women or the women shall not wear that which pertained to the men. And uh, we saw that um, just looking like the opposite sex is prohibited in inspiration. Such a, like things you consider these pictures. And so if this was abomination, what shall be said of the uh, next pictures? What could be said of this? Yet it is normal to wear it today, even by Christians to shout. We say, God forbid, um, another issue. This is another one. And we are not just here to point at the problems, but uh, just to reflect upon these things. In whose likeness do you want to appear? Is it in the likeness of your maker who pronounced everything good after creation? Or you want to modify yourself? just as Adam and Eve modified themselves because of sin. These modifications comes because of sin and not because of the working of Christ on our hearts. Tetrosa disease. Tetrosa disease. Most ladies are seriously mining for diseases. Disease common in the West where this foul practice has been practiced for so long. 15% of women there had the condition um, by 1999. Symptoms include painful periods and excess bleeding, endometriosis, nausea, stomach upsets, dizziness, headaches, and fatigue. And you wonder how a person can have nausea, stomach upset, dizziness, headaches, and fatigue. It's lack of oxygenated blood traveling in the right way because the veins, they are restricted the blood arteries are restricted, constricted, I mean, and so they cannot pump the blood and carry good oxygenated blood to the brain to help it be alert in uh, the way that you should be. And so these have caused a lot of problems. Perfect health depends on perfect circulation, and when any of the blood vessels is constricted, then you are not going to have a perfect circulation and you are not going to have a, a perfect health. In Britain, a million had been treated for the condition by 1999, these conditions we have mentioned. More information then can be got from the internet or read it, uh, the profile, December 11 to December 17, 1991, article by Samuel Rampire. Uh, and so we see women diseases and uh, we are told some the, some of the diseases women have, actually, they are not treatable. They are called lifestyle diseases. And the only way that uh, they can be treated is, um, uh, is, uh, is changing the lifestyle. Most of the lifestyle diseases, they do not have a cure. Most of the lifestyle diseases, they do not have a cure. Why? Because today you will be treated of something and tomorrow it is the same thing because the lifestyle is not changing. So you find that most of the diseases and more so women diseases, they are called lifestyle diseases. And that is why you just need to change the lifestyle and everything shall be uh, okay. Uh, indeed, people are perishing for lack of knowledge. Behold, ye despise us and 
perish, Acts 13, 41. Try imagining the following. Holy angels in tight trousers, women who learn to wrap their vessel in honor, 1 Thessalonians 4, 4 and 5, 8, that everyone of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the last of uh, cons uh, concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. He therefore that despises, despises not man, but God, who hath also given unto us his uh, Holy Spirit. And so uh, hold your vessel in sanctification and honor. You would want to appear in the same manner the angels appear before the Lord. Holy angels with wigs, lipsticks, plated hair, earring, tattoos, miniskirts, low necklaces, uh, hipsters, and eye and pencils. Hold. You can imagine such a, such a scenario. Angels in high heel shoes with punk hairs and dancing, all this stuff that um, we see on TV. I had promised uh, I'll talk about um, this uh, woman, Mary Kwand, uh, because she has brought in sufferings and toll, miniskirts. And so let us look at this. Is this what we would call actually a higher education? Is this what we call higher education? Martin Luther and universities and schools, I am much afraid that uh, the universities will prove to be the great gates of hell unless they diligently labor in explaining the scriptures and engraving them in the hearts of you. I advise no one to place his child where the scripture do not reign paramount. Every institution in which men are not unceasingly occupied with the word of God must become corrupt. History of the Reformation in the 16th century by J.H. Maldi Ogbin, Ogbin in uh, 1846. And so this is the commonality of uh, dress in the colleges, in the university, where the word of God do not reign paramount. And then we can think that we can take our children in such environments and still they have morals to sustain them at the end of their courses. Continued on, talking about uh, this Lady Mary Kwan. This is honorable and this is nakedness and this is wha what you find people in. The inventor of uh, the mini clothes, Mary Kwan, and uh, why did she design these clothes, by the way? She said, mini clothes are a symbolic of those girls who want to seduce a man. Mary Kwan, the inventor of the miniskirt. On her, in, in an interview, she was asked what kind of a person today's woman wants to be. And she answered, a sexual creature. She displays her sexuality instead of this coy business of hiding it. Today, she dresses to say, I'm sexy, I like men, and I enjoy life. Now, we have innocent souls out there who do not know this, and uh, out of ignorance, they have been just doing whatever they are doing. Maybe they lack the information from their fathers. They lack the information from their mothers. They lack the information from the elders of the church, and they lack the information from uh, uh, the pastors of the churches. They should know these things that they are indulging in, what is their origin. It is not good to condemn people who do not have information and they have grown up to know that whatever they are doing is right. And so this is why we give information so that people may know in whose likeness are we living uh, 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 or are we doing the things that we are doing. At the end of the day, you are either in the likeness of your creator who uh, 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 proclaimed everything good after creation or you are in the likeness of the arch enemy of the cross, Satan himself, who has set up a system to make sure that he fights everything that uh, God would want his children to be like. And so this is a message of um, a restoration and not a message of condemnation. If Mary Kwan's mother hadn't sent her to ballet lessons, the miniskirt might never have been invented. During one ballet class, she says, I could hear exciting music coming from next door. 
And when I, I peeked uh, through the glass, I saw a tap dancing class take place. And in the middle of the room, a girl of couple of years older than me, who was the vision of everything I wanted to be, Kwan said. She was wearing a short pleated skirt about 10 inches long with a skinny black sweater, black tights, and a bob haircut. So this was her dream. And when she peeked into that room, she saw her dream visualized and fulfilled in what this young lady was wearing. She says, what struck me was how the whole outfit focused on what she had on her feet, a pair of white angle socks and a pair of patterned tap shoes with angle straps, the anonymous tap done that made a lasting impression on the iconic 60s designer and the rest is fashion history. From that day on, I was struck with this lovely vision of legs and angles, she told the week. The image of that girl stayed with me. So uh, she says, the image of that girl stayed with me. I started trying to make my own clothes, cutting up bed spreads. I used to start rearranging my school uniform teaching up my skirt to be more exciting looking, the 1960s and the politics of the miniskirt. And so this is the inventor of the miniskirt, Mary Kwan, and who actually in the real sense invented these things. We may say it is Mary Kwan, but um, listen to the pen of inspiration. Uh, talk about this mini clothes Mary Kwan brought on the face of the earth. Um, who was the inventor of uh, these things? Uh, who was the inventor of um, mini clothes? In uh, Child Garden, we read this. Uh, we read. Saturn, Child Garden 427, paragraph one, Saturn invented the fashions which leave the limbs exposed, chilling back the life current from its original course. And parents bow at the shrine of fashion and so clothe their children that the nerves and veins become contracted and do not under the purpose that God designed they should. Now, what is the purpose that God designed they should? In a little while, we shall see. The result is habitually cold feet and hair. Those parents who follow fashion instead of reason will have an account to render to God for thus robbing their children of hell. Even life itself is frequently sacrificed to the God of fashion. So Saturn invented the mini clothes. What was the design of God at creation? Look here. Uh, we are told that... Um, the limbs were not formed by our creator to endure exposure as was the face. The Lord provided also large veins and nerves for the limbs and feet to contain a large amount of the current human life that the limbs might be uniformly as warm as the body. They should be so thoroughly clothed as to induce the blood to the extremities. This was the purpose of God. This was his likeness in the beginning. So in whose likeness are you going? Is it in the likeness of God and his purpose or the likeness of Saturn? through Mary Quand with her mini plots. Continued on. Um, teenagers create their own political and fashion space. Before the 1960s, young women had been expected to dress in the style of their mothers, which was usually loosely based on Parisian culture. Um, and um, I'll just... Um, I have to do something a little bit here. Um, the women of the all, if you, you will look at how um, these um, women dressed. Let us see this. So before the 1960s, young women had been expected to dress in the style of their mothers, which was usually loosely based on Parisian culture. 
uh, uh, knitting the dress according to the requirements of somebody. For example, as late as 1962, a Sears catalog portrayed mothers and daughters as patchwork pals who are overjoyed that they are wearing identical dresses. Looking back at the late 1950s, the English designer Sally Taffin remarked, there weren't any clothes for young people at all. One just looked like their mother still 1997. However, by the 1960s, this is the introduction of Mary Kwan, the youth protest and demands for individual expression revealed that young adults were gaining a self-conscious awareness of themselves as distinct and unified group that was able to respond to political events in way that were different from their parents. This is Cawthon, 1999. Youngsters felt they no longer needed to follow the rules of uh, bogus morality and manners, which they saw as hypocritical and based on double standards. As this young political entity gained a voice, they created a space for a new and distinctive fashion that embodied their own political views, not their parents and so and remember one thing that um, our godly parents are our gods on earth and um, their desire if it is godly is the desire of our father which is in heaven in fact that is why we have the fifth commandment honor thy parents in the land that i give you that thy life uh, honor thy father and thy mother uh, this is the first commandment with a promise that um, you may be blessed and your life may be longer in the land that you are going. God expects uh, us to honor our parents. And um, the promise that is in that command is that we may live long. There is a reason why people are dying very young, because they do not honor their godly parents who are in charge of them as their guardian, as they it was their God on earth. And so our parents represent our heavenly father. And when we start disobeying them, our godly parents, then we shorten our days. By the way, sin shortens our days. Disobey, disobedience is sin. And so don't expect to live for long if you are disobedient. And so Mary Kwan has shortened the lives of many people in her seen inventions. A new class of young consumerism, the young generation was indeed growing up rebellious and articulate and with more money than they ever had before. Young people suddenly became a powerful class of consumers who demanded a fashion that matched the spirit of youth. Consequently, the whole structure of the fashion system was challenged from the youth in the streets as the prestige of culture came under attack or was seemed irrelevant, Cawthon in 1999. Upstart designers and boutiques began to cater to a new youth market that could now buy what they wanted and to older women who began to scramble to look like their daughters. So you, you are seeing things start to be reversed. Young ladies, back in the days, they were so happy to look like their mothers. But as Mary Kwan and fashion designers introduced these things, they started their own culture or design. And instead of the mothers upholding the standard, they started to struggle to look like just their children. No wonder this is a generation full of confusion. You see a mother and you wouldn't even differentiate her from uh, the, 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 the daughter. And uh, a sexual creature she is. This is um, what Mary Quand actually bragged about. She displays her sexuality instead of this coy business of hiding. It's today she's dressed to say, I'm sexy, I like men, and enjoy life. Many clothes are symbolic of those girls who want to seduce men. These are um, the answers that Mary Quand gave in one of the, her interviews why she designed the mini clothes. Mary Kwan, the invent of the miniskirt, not the public boast of Mary Kwan, the invent of the miniskirt. This fashion designer declared that her creation was for the purpose of making sex illicit more available in the afternoon. In an interview, she was asked what kind of, of a person today's woman wants to be, and she answered a sexual creature. She displays her sexuality instead of this coy business of hiding. It's today she dresses to say, I'm sexy, I like men, and I enjoy it. But then, 
uh, then she made this bold statement, meaning clothes are a symbolic of the girls who want to seduce men. Many women have brushed aside criticism of their short dresses by blaming everything on the dirty old men with their evil thoughts. But is that the basic fault? This is not confined to dirty old men. Every man, woman, and a child in the world has a carnal nature by birth. But the male struggle to keep the thoughts straight is based upon more than the fleshly nature. It is rooted in the fact that God created men with a completely different sexual makeup than women. God made man in the beginning with a very sensitive sexual nature that could be quickly aroused by the sight of female nudity. Woman, on the other hand, was created with a sexual nature which will not be so easily stirred, especially by sight. She was made to be more responsive to touch and tenderness. Her more subtle sexuality will be drawn out by the physical attentions involved in the conjugal relationship. God never intended for man's sex emotions to be stimulated outside the marriage chamber. And in order to protect him, God placed within the woman a delicate sense of modest reserve so that she will not expose her body except to her own husband. Now, you may ask, where are you getting all this information? Where is the woman uh, who was put before man protected from um, uh, 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 being a person who should arouse? Were women created in a way and... Um, uh, God outlined for them uh, a makeup that will not easily uh, arouse men. Thy way, O oh Lord, in the sanctuary. You have just to look. The church is called the woman. The temple in the wilderness, that is the woman. And you can see that that temple was decorated so well in the inside and the beauty of inside of the silver, the brass, and the gold. When uh, the Shekinah glory heat on those uh, 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 minerals or um, those gems, uh, those precious stones, the glory emanating from inside is the one that lit the whole clothing that was on the sanctuary. But you find that the sanctuary itself, it was covered fully so that the people in the camp could not see anything going on inside. I want the women to listen very carefully. This is not just a caricature. This is not just a mere saying. The woman is the child. The woman is that temple. The man is not that temple. The man is not that church. The man is the high priest of that church. The man is uh, the prophet of that church. And so women as the church and women as the temples, their beauty has to be that beauty of inside that it should not arouse people carelessly. And then when you look at the sanctuary and the church itself, it was covered very well so that the people in the camp could not see what was inside. Only the high priest, by the way, per se, was allowed to go into the most holy place and see the very precious things that were in the most holy place, but no one else, even the Levites, and uh, the normal priest never went inside the most holy place. The most uh, 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 delicate parts of uh, the woman's body should be covered so that only the high priest of her home, that is the husband, should be able to see her and not even the friends or the brothers who will uh, be like uh, the, the normal priest or neither should a neighbor, those are the people in the camps, be able to see the nakedness of the woman. So uh, according to the sanctuary itself, the woman should derive her dressing code, seeing how the sanctuary in the wilderness was dressed and not anyone was allowed to behold that, those precious things. And women, they should understand they are precious people more. So the things that they are being told to cover, they are most precious things that uh, should not be just seen by anyone. Precious things like gold and silver are covered in the dirt and it costs people even their life to dig down to get the gold. But women will display their sexuality the way they want. And things that are perishing like gold, silver, and bronze, you have these things to mine them. The earth covers people and they die while looking for these things, while just by a glance of look, a man will see the precious things of a woman. 
this is shame and it should be not be like that more so on the people who are professing uh, godliness. The plan was perfect, but it has been broken down in one area. Satan has managed to destroy to a very great extent that inherent modesty with which the creator endowed womanhood and inhibited nudity or provocative half dress has become the accepted norm of modern fashion. On every side, the Christian as well as the non-Christian is forced to look upon scenes of nakedness which are utterly foreign to the original plan of uh, the creator. Ornaments, who in the Old Testament were known for wearing ornaments. In Judges 8.24, And Gideon said unto them, I will desire a request of you that you will give me every man the earrings of his prey. For they had golden earrings because they were Ishmaelites, not Israelites. Second Samuel 1.24, God had already instructed the Israelites to put away their ornaments at Mount Sinai. It is King Saul that again adorned the women of Israel with ornaments. There are some sports in which performing, uh, in which performing, the participants are usually left naked. Such include swimming, athletics, lawn tennis, and some ball games. Music competition is not left out. Music festivals in which dancing costumes are worn, and um, and uh, just uh, allow me to look at this about um these sports. Um, yes, we find that um, there are sports uh, where music festivals in which dancing costumes are worn and um, the waist moves so vigorous to the extent that the nakedness there of the dancer is exposed. One may say that they wear pants or the trousers as we call them in Africa. The repeated exposing of the undergarments has a bewitching influence upon the onlookers. Those that desire to please God will abstain from such a sports um, and admonish their daughters and their the uh, and uh, and sons appropriately. Who in the Bible is mentioned by name to having put on paint on her face? In Second Kings chapter nine verse thirty, and when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it and she painted her face and tired her head and looked out at the window. She was not an example of Christians to imitate. You know Jezebel, the, 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 this daughter of uh, Ithabel, how he she got married to Ahab and uh, led Israel to Baalim and Baal worship. And so this is not a person that you will want to imitate her fashion. And uh, when Jehu came to Jezreel, it was just after Ahab's death, and this was one way of seducing Jehu to look at her in a seductive manner. However, the Israel later behaved in the same way in Ezekiel 23, to 42. You can read that. God pronounced judgment on such as asking them what they shall do on the judgment day. The face is not just the eyelids, but also the facial skin, the lips, and the eyebrows. And uh, these people dress thinking that um, they will please anyone. But look at um, what um, we are told in the Bible, in uh, the book of Jeremiah. You may wear these things thinking that um, you are pleasing people. But then Jeremiah says this, And when thou art spoiled, what wilt thou do? Though thou clothed thyself with crimson, Though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold, though thou rendest thy faith with painting, in vain shalt thou make thyself fair. Thy lovers will despise thee, they will seek thy life. So all these things are vanity. If you are doing this for pleasing anyone, we are told vanity, vanity, and vanity. To those who waste time before the mirror, to those that love their faces more than they love gold, wasting time before the mirror, doing this and that, a plague is coming. You have made fashion your God and the living God will spoil it. You definitely will receive the mark of the beast. In Revelation 16, 2, and the first wind and poured out his vial upon the earth, then fell a nice son and grieved his soul upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. Because any person who lives in this earth and they are sinful and they are not following after God's direction, eventually they'll see the mark of the beast and uh, they'll be 
those people who shall actually go uh shall get punished by the seven last plagues could leprosy be so widespread among ladies today in leviticus 14 9 but it shall be on the seventh day that he shall shave all his hair off his head and his beard and his eyebrows even all his hair he shall shave off and he shall wash his clothes also he shall wash his flesh in water and shall be clean shaving the eyebrows was for those with leprosy if it could be so widespread today then they need keep of the church building at least what did king solomon find to be more bitter than death i applied my heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom and the reason of things and to know the wickedness of folly even of foolishness and madness and I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets and her hand as bands. You remember the woman in Proverbs chapter 7 who ensnared the man. And how did she ensnare this man? Because she was wearing a hallowed garment. And so this man was infatuated by the garment and then the woman became a snare and a net for that man. And so Solomon found it bitter than death, such a uh, woman. Who so pleaseth God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. And so the best way to escape these people, the best way to escape the uh, snares of uh, these people is um, to be in Christ. And so, behold, this have I found, said the preacher, counting one by one to find out the account, which yet my soul seeketh, but I find not one man among a thousand have I found, but a woman among all those have I not found. Lo, this only have I found that God hath made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. And so, the question is to ask, the question to ask here is how do women achieve uh, at this thing? How do they ensnare men? How do they achieve uh, how do they achieve these things? How do they ensnare men? Is it not by attracting the attention of men to their erogenous zones? Women are more prone to fashionable scenes than um, actually men and uh, sister white says that she called this issue to attention because not one in a thousand of professed women uh who profess the faith of seventh day adventist uh, dress as they should who is compared to gold in syria as jewel of gold is a swine's now so is a fair woman which is without discretion if you were without discretion then you are like um a jewel of gold in a swine's knot. A gracious woman retaineth honor, and strong men retain riches. Again, Proverbs eleven sixteen, Proverbs thirty one ten. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. What about the many fanciful clothes and ornaments in the book of Isaiah chapter three? You can read that uh, the women of Israel, the, the, the daughters of Zion. Moreover, the Lord said, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and making a tingling with their feet, wanton hib, deceiving with their eyes, mincing or tripping nicely. Therefore, the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts, discover, make naked. In that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tingling ornaments about their feet and their cowls and their round tires like the moon. And um, instead of these things, there shall be just uh, a burning. We are addressing this issue in whose likeness uh, do we want to be both men and women? In whose likeness do we want to be? The bonnets... And the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablets, this Lord shall remove the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers and the earrings, the rings and the nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel and the mantles and the wimples and the crisping pins, the glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils. 
And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be sting, and instead of a girdle, a rend, and instead of well set their bald, set hair baldness, and instead of a stomacher, a guarding of sackcloth. Are they some clothes known for the business of harlotry? In Proverbs 7, 10, and 11, Behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. She is loud and stubborn, her feet abide not in her house. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearl, having golden cup and filled golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abomination of the earth. This is the woman of Proverbs 7, the woman of Proverbs chapter 17. And we are told only those in Christ shall be able to escape her snare. So in Proverbs 9, 13, again, a foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple, stupid, and knoweth nothing. Let all bitterness, Ephesians 4, 31, and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away. And clamor is uh, this, um, uh, uh, this desire to be noticed by appearance. We are being told that... Uh, the clamoring that uh, women have, be it men or women, just wanting to be seen and to be noticed because of the way they are appearing. Uh, it is foolishness and it means that people know nothing. And we are told that this should be put away, this, uh, 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 this desires to be seen by people. It should be put away from us. And malice, we can talk about malice and uh, malice is evil intention. When you dress, are you dressing with good intention or are you dressing with malice? These things should be put away. They should not be retained at any level. In Isaiah 3.16, moreover, the Lord says, because the daughters of Zion are haughty, walking and meeting as they go and making a tingling with their feet, uh, and uh, they shall... Um, uh, be judged. Claim includes everything that seeks to draw attention to oneself, inclu including glittering colors, strong perfumes, noisiness that is well achieved by wearing high heel shoes with pointed hard metal tips. Such a person think that they know a lot about how to be smart, but they know absolutely nothing, as Proverbs 9 13 says that they know nothing. What about the tight tops? What is the difference between grannies and the youthful girls? Why don't grannies wear tight tops and trousers, skirts, or miniskirts? Well, grannies' bodies are sagging everywhere. The youths are too excited with their youthful body parts to observe, preserve. They want to show them to everyone. So did the ancient Israel. You can uh, read the book of Ezekiel chapter 16. There is a strong language that the Lord uses there on the women of Israel warring after Egyptian and Babylonian, such a strong language. He says that I took you when you were a child and adorned you as I should have adorned you, but you took the beauty that I gave you and used it as um, a harlot. And because you decided to use your beauty as a harlot, so shall you be used as a harlot. So these are the things that uh, we see people coming to church with and um, we find that uh, these are the things that we appear with in the wedding. I talked about the wedding. The church will, will be married to Christ when he comes. Will it be dressed like this? In Revelation 19, it is dressed with fine linen and they are covered by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Is this the fine linen uh, um, that we may wear as a symbolic of Christ's righteousness covering with us? This uh, we can uh, talk about. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. And so if we are seeking after the beauty, it is vain, 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 and in vain. Jeremiah 4, 13, when thou art spoiled, what wilt thou do? Though thou clothest thyself with crimson, though thou decketh thee with ornaments of gold, though thou rentest thy face with painting, in vain shalt thou make thyself. Thy lovers will despise thee, they will seek thy life. That is what actually... The people who think you are, you, you sometimes you think that you are neat, both men and women. But uh, these fashion designers, they are seeking your life. Because with their clothing, 
we do not clothe ourselves as we should, and uh, the blood is constricted, they are not seeking for our beauty, actually. They are seeking for our life. And Satan would want to hurry people to the grave without meeting Christ. As fast as he can hurry you to the grave, the better for him. And so we should be aware that walking in Satan's way do not prolong our life, but uh, really decreases our life. And that is the object of Satan. In Ezekiel 23, 21, thou, thus thou callest to remember and the lewdness of the youth in bruising thy teeth by the Egyptians for the pups of the youth. And uh, most ladies are so excited about, about their youthful breasts until they are beyond reserved desire of Christian women. They freely wear low necklaces and uh, they leave the cleavage, sagging necklaces, tops, hold at the chest and tight tops. In Hosea 2.2, 2, we are told, plead with your mother, plead, for she is not my wife, neither am I her husband. Let her therefore put away her wardoms out of her sight and her adulteress be from between her breasts. These things, uh, although they are written in symbolic languages, but the principle applies in reality that um, you will find a lot of people with their cleavages and within the holes on their clothes. And what is it for? Is it for aeration? It is not for aeration. It is for them to be seen and people to be ensnared by them. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people, he will beautify the meek with salvation. This is what the Lord is seeking in Psalms 149, uh, paragraph 4. He is, he wants to beautify us with salvation. And salvation is that costly clothing. Are, the character is what he wants us to have and not uh, these things that um, uh, uh, makes people to be drawn to us. It is not with material ornaments that God beautifies the meek, but with salvation. And uh, Isaiah 61, verse 10 is a proof of this. I'll greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with jewels. I want you to notice in Isaiah 61, the Lord covers Think about something that is covered. Something that is covered is not something that is exposed. When I tell you, cover that plate, cover that Bible, cover that chair, I mean that um, no place should be exposed so that neither that may get onto it or um, maybe the cover may not be destroyed or uh, Maybe you are having some food. Cover it so that uh, it may not be contaminated by germs or uh, it may not attract um, something that uh, will uh, not make it good. And so the Lord is seeking to cover us. It is only us who are seeking to uncover ourselves. But the main agenda of God is to cover his children. So in whose likeness, this is the question we are looking at, in whose likeness do will you want to uh appear. I'll clothe her priest with salvation. Let thy priest be clothed with righteousness. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother, for they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. And so instead of putting these chains on our neck, Proverbs 1, 8 and 9, we should um, be chained with the ornament of grace. Psalms 132, 9 and 16, the Lord is seeking to clothe us with salvation and with righteousness. So what could Ezekiel 16, 13 to, 10 to 13 mean? I clothed thee also with broided work and showed thee with badger skin. Now look at the garment that uh, this woman was clothed with. We talked about the sanctuary and the women appearing as the sanctuary appeared. And I guarded thee about with fine linen. And I covered thee with silk. I decked thee also with ornaments. And I put bracelets upon thy hands and a chain on thy neck. And I put a jewel on thy forehead and wear earrings in thine ears and a beautiful crown upon the head. Thus was thou decked with gold and silver and thy remnant was of fine linen and silk and broided work. And this is the sanctuary language, how the sanctuary was closed by the way. And uh, 
all these things that you see they are fine are uh, most of these pearls were inside beaten gold beaten silver beaten bronze they were inside meaning that the beauty from the inside is what made the whole difference of that sanctuary. Did it, thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil, and thou was exceedingly beautiful, and thou didst prosper into a kingdom. The language is figurative. Otherwise, the chapter was written that Jerusalem may know her abominations of which wearing and ornaments was one. And you look at those um, those um, uh, uh, metals, they were used inside the sanctuary and not outside the sanctuary. The outside was covered with the gold skin and the ram skin, and then we have the hanabaja covering the whole of it. But when the Shekinah glory came into that uh, sanctuary, um, the whole thing was transparent. Even the hanabaja skin, which was so thick that uh, nothing could penetrate it, the Shekinah glory could penetrate it. And so um, a man or a woman who have Christ in their heart, when uh, he possesses the heart, the outside beauty, uh, they, they cannot uh, really hide that um, uh, inside glory. It will really um, go beyond the transparent skin and uh, be seen in the outside. And so we shouldn't be striving to appear good in the outside. I'm not saying that we should appear uh, carelessly, but um, we should be striving to have Christ in our heart. Then he will make that which is um, missing. The passage concerned the birth of the nation of Israel as they marched out of Egypt. This is Ezekiel chapter 16. And uh, you can still remember that God commanded them to put away their ornaments at point which he gave them when he, when he gave them his laws, which King Solomon says is like ornament to those that uh, uh, keep them. This was their journey. And uh, at some point you remember that... Um, they gave Aaron their ornaments. Uh, you can remember that they gave uh, Aaron some of these things which made the molten uh, uh, calf which they worshipped and uh, it brought a displeasure to God. So, um, if not, then in which year and in whose reign did God ever give the Israelites ornaments where none and you will find none, none, none. In reading Ezekiel, what does God want us to get? What does God want us to get by reading uh, the book of uh, Ezekiel? And here we see that... Uh, Thus will I cause lewdness to cease out of the land that all women may be taught not to do after your lewdness. The Bible is not written to encourage us into sin, but to show us the way out of it. Even in the Old Testament, mortification of the body was not for the Israelites to uh, actually do. What else? How should we dress to the assembly of God? Zephaniah 1, 18, and it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I'll punish the princes and the king's children and all such a, that are clothed with strange apparel. Verse 9, in the same day I'll punish all those that live on the threshold which fill their master's houses with violence and deceit. 1 John 2, 15 to 17, strange apparel can only be immodest in decent clothes, usually worn by hallows. God will not spare from the judgment those who willingly and deliberately or out of willful ignorance dress like that to church. They bring the last of the eyes and the flesh into the house of God. 1 John 2, 15 and 17, and uh, the last of the flesh, the last of the eyes and the pride of life. These things are not of God, but of Satan. And uh, the world and these things is passing away, but the man who keepeth the word of God shall endure forevermore. And so we want to endure forevermore, but how can we endure forevermore by having the word of God hidden in our heart? 
Can ornaments be made to present idols? And I will visit upon her days, her the days of Bali, wherein she burned incense to them, and she decked herself with her earrings and her jewels, and she went after the, her lovers and forgot me, said the Lord Hosea 2.13. And so the people who wanted to go after lovers, this is how they dress themselves. So some today make images of Jesus and Mary into earrings, finger rings, necklaces, and worship. Indeed, they are not the images of Mary and Jesus, but of some heathen gods, according to Exodus 20. Three to six, thou shalt not make any image where on earth or in heaven all such a kind of likeness. This is an abomination in the sight of the Lord. And so many times you find that um, these things, the images of people are made into earring and all this stuff. And the Lord says that um, he will visit the people because this is Bali. Dreadlocks, there is no room for keeping dreadlocks. Samson never kept dreadlocks. He simply had long hair according to the Nazarite bar, number 6, 1 to 21, and Judges 13, 7. So Rastafarianism cropped into fashion much later after Samson had long died. Solomon simply kept long hair, not dreads. Priests were to keep short hair and not to shave blondie. See Ezekiel 44, 20 and Leviticus 21. They had to trim. They didn't have to keep locks. And we are a nation of priesthood. Beauty is the inner person. Who can find a vicious woman for her price is far above the rubies. Proverbs 31, 10. A vicious woman is a crown to her husband, but she that maketh ashamed is a rottenness in his bones. Proverbs 12, 4. So, Talk about, we, we saw how the dress of a, a man or a woman do not only end with uh, her, but also affects, um, affects, um, affects the husband and the children or the wife. The way a man or a woman dresses also goes to affect her. Uh, uh, the family. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gate. So physical beauty is very perishable and deceitful. Look at the inner man and woman. So let not her beauty deceive you. Look at the inner man. Jesus reproduced in the heart. So what is the problem that we are facing? Our hearts are not sanctified and we want to look like the world and yet still want to be called Christian. In fact, I'll take you to the book, um, uh, the book Great Controversy. Uh, the book Great Controversy is what I like to share with us as we look at the few last sentiments. Uh, this is um is it 388 588 sorry not 388 great controversy 588.3 now i'll go back to my slide first it says uh our hearts are not sanctified and we want to look like the world and yet still want to be called christian so uh 1 John 2, 15, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which... Uh, believe not lest the light of glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them, looking like the world. This is the problem that we are facing today and still want to be Christian. Great Controversy 588.3. The line of distinction between professed Christians and the ungodly is now hardly distinguishable. Church members love what the world loves and are ready to join with them. And Satan determines to unite them in one body and thus strengthen his cause by sweeping all into the ranks of spiritualism. They spiritualize everything. Papists who boast of miracles as a certain sign of the true church will be readily deceived by this wonder-working power. 
and Protestants having cast away the shield of truth will also be deluded. Papists, Protestants, and Wallens will alike accept the form of goldness without the power, and they will see in this union a grand movement for the conversion of the world and the ushering of a long of the long expected millennium. And so today, the line of distinction between professed Christians and then godly is now hardly distinguishable. That is why even persecution slumbers. We are told this is why even persecution slumbers. We read, we read in uh, Great Controversy 48.3. There is another and more important question that should engage the attention of the churches today. The Apostle Paul declares that all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution, 2 Timothy 3.12. Why is it then that persecution seems in a great degree to slumber? The only reason is that the church has conformed to the world standard and therefore awakens no opposition. The religion which is current in our day is not of the pure and holy character that marked the Christian faith in the days of Christ and his apostles. It is only because of the spirit of compromise with sin, because the great truth of the word of God are so indifferent regarded, because there is so little vital godliness in the church that Christianity is apparently so popular with the world. Let there be a revival of the faith and power of the early church and the spirit of persecution will be revived and the fires of persecution will be rekindled. But who wants persecution at such a time as this when the world is too good to live in? None of us. So what do we have in this world in this end time plugged ears you know someone introduced the phones which are good things and when he introduced the phone he introduced with the earphones everyone is plugged in literally and spiritually no one is listening to anything and i said in the other presentation we are in danger of being part of the papal system what is the papal system? When you go to Daniel chapter 7, the papal system has a mouth, it has eyes, and it has a head. But you notice in that head there is no ears. No one wants to listen. That is how papal we can become. Everyone is plugged in. No one wants to listen. But then we can plug in the way we want. Plugging your ears won't change the truth. Matthew 13, 13, therefore speak I to them in parables, because they sing, see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And is it the purpose of God that people should not hear and understand? No way. And so uh, the question is, in whose likeness? At the end of the day, uh, the question remains that um, in whose likeness do we want to appear? Is it in the likeness of God who pronounced everything good when he had completed creation? Or is it Satan in Genesis chapter 3 who introduced things which are opposed to what God introduced? This is the question I want to ask myself. This is the question I want you to ask yourself. And at the end of the day, I have to answer myself and you have to answer yourself. More so, we are individually responsible to God, but the church has also a duty to make sure that people do not become stumbling blocks to others. We are told that any display of apparel which is not sanctioning the uh, holy word of God is um, enough reason to suspend somebody from the church or called a censure or a church discipline. And so um, we want to err on the side of mercy, but we also want to remain firm on the principles and love each other, uh, love our neighbors as we love ourselves. And if we love our neighbors as we love ourselves, we will not be a cause of their stumbling by seeking clamor and uh, dressing in a way that will make many stumble and yet cover ourselves with this saying that um, men are weak morally. That is why they are falling away. No, men are not weak morally. There are people who are really converted and they have been drawn as a brand plucked out of fire. And you will want to be the last person to be a temptation to a person who has been plucked 
out uh, like a brand out of fire. Let us live not for ourselves, but live for others. And uh, may the good Lord bless us. Shall we close? So thank you, Heavenly Father, for your word is good, more than sweeter than the honeycomb, more sweeter than the honey it is. May we keep your word in our hearts that we may not sin against thee. And so help those who are struggling with this issue of dress reform. Help us, the ones who preach these messages, that we may not be castaways. The tone, the information, the way we relay, let it be for the glory and honor of your name. In Jesus' name, amen.